Hello once again, I'm Cosmic, and today we're going to be taking a look at episode 1 of Telltale's new story-driven point-and-click set in the Borderlands universe, Tales from the Borderlands. It's pretty difficult to review something that's incomplete like an episodic game. It's one of the reasons why I stayed away from reviewing previous series like The Walking Dead and The Wolf Among Us. It's also difficult to do a spoiler-free review on a game that is completely about story. However, I have been interested in the Borderlands instalment since its announcement, and I have always enjoyed the universe Gearbox created, but always felt that it was somewhat wasted on the FPS genre. As the first episode in the series, Episode 1 Zero Sum is all about introductions and setting the tone. Taking place after the events of Borderlands 2, we are introduced to the two main and playable characters of the game. First, we meet Reese, a handsome Jack wannabe who works for Hyperion and has recently been screwed over by his boss. Reese goes planetside to Pandora to find a way to screw over his boss and become the new Star Company man. Second, we meet Fiona, a stylish con artist and a Pandoran orphan. Fiona, alongside her sister and mentor, are working on the con of their lives, and events thrust Fiona and Reese into a shaky alliance. In terms of gameplay, the game is very similar to Telltale's previous games. In Zero Sum, there's no exploration, it's all a very linear story driven experience. There are quick time events for all the action sequences, which usually just require you to do a combination of moving left and right, and then aiming on the screen and hitting the right button at the right time. There are very few areas you have the ability to walk around in. Those that you do have the ability to walk around in, there are a few objects to either look at or interact with, but nothing much. Telltale's format of story-driven point-and-click has at this point become a subgenre of its own, and if you've played the likes of Walking Dead or The Wolf Among Us, you'll be right at home gameplay-wise with Borderlands. As is now commonplace in Telltale's style of storytelling, the game is filled with choices for you to make that dictate future events. Your dialogue choices, action choices, will not only affect immediate situations, but as the players of Telltale's previous games know, it will affect events in later episodes episodes. As Zero Sum is the first episode, you won't see much in terms of the effects of the things that you do and say, but there's plenty of choices in the episode that will no doubt have an effect on episode 2 and beyond. Coming into Tales from the Borderlands, one thing that I was very curious about was how they would implement and stay true to the core series and its content. After all, the Borderlands games are FPS loot galore games, and I was curious to see if any elements of those games would be brought into this series. Interestingly, while you don't use it much in the first episode, you're given a small glimmer into an inventory system. Throughout Zero Sum episode, you'll pick up a few items, but nothing much. However, I certainly hope that in future episodes, we see interesting things happen with the infantry system, and perhaps depending on what loot you choose and use, that that affects the outcome of certain situations, and it would be an interesting mechanic to play around with. One thing I was disappointed with, which I certainly hope appears in the coming episodes was the lack of puzzles. There was ample opportunity for some really good puzzles in Zero Sum, especially when Reese tries to hack something with his optical cybernetics. Not only are puzzles a good part of point and clicks, but I feel they could have been implemented really well in this first episode, plus it would have added some decent gameplay to boot. Graphically, the game hits all the right marks. It looks and feels like Borderlands. All the locations are well designed and have great detail. I did encounter an issue where the subtitle text would appear from time to time out of sync with the actual sound, but it's a very minor complaint. One thing I was really impressed with was the UI design and how it fits perfectly with the Borderlands theme. It's got that futuristic tech feel about it that blends perfectly with the rest of the aesthetic, which is great considering many games tend to have a disjointed look between the UI and the rest of the graphics. The story, without giving any spoilers, has been fantastic so far in my opinion. Story is certainly a subjective thing and what some people enjoy and think is good, other people don't. One of my biggest annoyances with the original Borderlands games was the potential for good story, but they never really met that potential or generally went anywhere with it. 
Borderlands 2 story was a lot better than the first, but that was due to the introduction of a really good villain, being Handsome Jack, voiced by Troy Baker, and the fact is that Handsome Jack did actually carry the second game. Tales from the Borderlands story, at least in the first episode, is told retrospectively by Reese and Fiona, as they have been captured by an unknown bandit who is interrogating them. Not only is the story well told, but it's packed with Borderlands humour too, which is very entertaining. What the game does thus far is bring a certain depth to the universe that I feel was missing from the first person shooters. You will see characters from the other games make appearances too and it's all very well executed. Tales from the Borderlands has not only brought a certain depth to the universe that I felt was missing in the previous games but it actually has brought something that none of the other games have had and that is actual playable characters that you care about and have a personality and story. Now while some of the Vault Hunters from Borderlands 1 and 2 were very cool, like Zero, they didn't really have any kind of personal story that you could play through. Through. With Reese and Fiona, however, you they actually have personalities. You can connect with them, you can empathise with them, you can relate to them, and that actually makes you care more about them and the story than it does if they're just, you know, completely voiceless characters. And it's something that the Borderlands series has really needed, and I'm really glad to see it in this. Interestingly enough, personally, I found more enjoyment out of Tales from the Borderlands than so far, even in just episode one, than I have in the entire world. Walking Dead series, mainly for two reasons. One, The Walking Dead became very predictable very fast. Going through, you knew that people were going to die near enough every episode, and to be fair, I'm kind of done with zombies at the moment in video games. They've done, been done to death to the point of zombies are just zombies and they're kind of boring. Secondly, while there is an established lore in the Borderlands universe, Telltale could go anywhere in the story. You feel that they have a certain freedom with the universe because it's Borderlands that they never had with The Walking Dead and they can do things that they've never done before. It leaves you open to being surprised and interested and seeing the story through and it's just something that it's kind of like a spark, a glimmer of creativity that they've never previously had before. Overall it was a very good first episode in my opinion. It did a good job of introducing the characters and setting the wheels of the story in motion. I was disappointed with the lack of puzzles and overall the lack of gameplay and too much emphasis on quick time events. However, as story driven games go, Telltale are quickly becoming masters at this art form in their particular format. And that was Tales from the Borderlands episode 10 sum. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Do like, subscribe and leave a comment and I will see you next time.